Okay, my butterflies, we are back, back, back. And guess what? It's just me today. And guess what? That's because I need to talk to you guys. I miss you guys. And I love you guys. So, yes, butterflies. So, today, we're going to talk about the M word. I know. Mindset. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear the word mindset, I automatically think about someone telling me, oh, well, you just need to change the way you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Yes and no. Okay. So when we are diagnosed with chronic pain, our entire lives have literally been shattered, cracked all, all to pieces. Uh, so we don't know what to think. However, once you get a couple of years down the line in this life, there is a change in perspective that has to occur. And even that change of perspective, because all these different words, all these different terminologies kind of all hits the same once you start learning the definitions of the words, right? It's like, oh, you're just changing the word. It still means the same. But if you're going to have a productive and enjoyable life with chronic pain, you're going to have to learn to look at things. So today we're going to talk about how you with chronic pain can provide support, get the understanding and some practical strategies that you can use that can lead to a fulfilling life while living with chronic pain. We're going to deepen, we're going to dive deep into the power of the mindset and the self-compassion for those who are experiencing chronic pain, because it's the self-compassion piece that, at least for my, from my viewpoint, that I was missing, because I am my hardest critic, and I get the feeling that if you are rocking with butterfly chats, you are too. I get the feeling that if you are a butterfly chats media fan, or a follower and a family member, you are your hardest critic. You are the one that goes out of your way to help the any and everybody. But when it comes to you, you were like, oh, I just did X, Y, Z perfectly, but I messed up on this one itty bitty piece. And now the whole thing is no good. So if that's you, go and have a seat. Get you something to sip on because we finna get into these topics, okay? The theme of this year that I want all of my butterflies to grab onto to at least open up your minds to try and understand is pivoting. We are going to work on finding our pivoting posture. We have to find a way to move from stressed and depressed. <laughs> I don't know who brought that term out, but I it's a, it's a cool term. We're going to pivot from stressed and depressed to living and thriving because the fact of the matter is no matter what your level of chronic pain is, no matter what your diagnosis is, chronic pain is chronic. Whether you are the tippity top of the Christians to the lowest of the low, (laughs) lowest of the low atheists, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Chronic pain is chronic pain. And it will be there, okay, in some form or fashion, okay? So there's no amount of Bibles you're going to throw at it that's just going to make it go away. But you can learn to work within the guidelines that your diagnosis will allow. So why is it important or for you to approach um, a pivoting posture with an open mindset? And how can you find this um, find this posture while dealing with a chronic illness? So So, uh, with chronic illness, you can approach your pivoting posture by changing just a few things. First, acknowledge your limits. Everything in our life has limits. 
red lights, stop lights. You, I mean, you can run through a red light, but is it advisable? Hmm. Nah. Um, <laughs> eating your favorite food, like, sure, you don't have to stop eating, but at some point you kind of should, cause it could end badly. So acknowledge where you are, recognize the reality that you're living in with chronic illness and accept that some activities or goals may not be your personal objective and approach them differently. Like in the world of social media, it's really a carbon copy, cut and paste. We're all looking at, um, you know, this influencer, that influencer, yada, 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 do this, do what this person is doing because it's making it for them. It's working for them. Do what works for you. And that will be the overarching theme for this year for myself. And in your journey, you won't really make it until you are truly true, authentic to yourself. Secondly, in order to really find your pivoting posture, you have to embrace flexibility. You got to understand, remain open to adapting goals, routines, and perspectives. Look, you may look vision boards, goal planning, journaling, charting, all the things. Make your plan. <laughs> That's great. Life happens because how many of us actually had on our vision board in high school to be chronically ill? I'll wait. Yeah, didn't think so. Um, so life happens. Okay. So be flexible enough to be like, okay, I want to drive a car after this procedure, this, this, or that. However, you have to get through whatever, you know, this many procedures. You got to do physical therapy. You got to do whatever you got to do. But sometimes you get injured in physical therapy. How do I know? Because I've done it. Um, and how did I get hurt in physical therapy? Because I was not being flexible. <laughs> I was trying to push, 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 push. Because everybody else was pushing. And I broke myself <laughs> even more. So be open to the idea that sometimes your goals may have to get pushed back some. Or you may have to, you may have to adjust your goals. You'll get there. Just you get there. You're going to also have to be cultivating um, your self-compassion. First of all, you're going to have to accept the fact that you deserve self-compassion. Like, you deserve to be or live a soft girl life. I personally am in my soft girl era. Like, to my future husband, hey, babe, what's up? Um, yeah, I'm in my soft girl era, and... I'm just going to get softer when we get together. So just, you know, accept that and be ready, okay? Um, because uh, dudes, guys listening to podcasts, you guys deserve to be in the soft guy area too. Now, I mean, I'm be soft, soft, but I mean, you know, gentlish. <laughs> but I mean, come on. You deserve to be compassionate or to have compassion given upon you starting by yourself and you people can't be compassionate towards you in the way that you want until you are compassionate to you to you and you show them how to be compassionate to you basically you're going to teach people how to love you teach people how to be compassionate towards you um you're going to focus on what's possible yep chronic illness has a whole lot of don'ts bunches of them chronic illness has a whole lot of nope can't do that nope can't do that nope 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 look at what you can do when you're making these goals don't make a goal you can make a goal to try to reach something that you are currently unable to do however consider making a goal 
to improve something that you're already doing, something that you already can do, but just make it better. Because if you can improve on what you are able to do, then that's just going to make you stronger to get to those things that you can't do. It kind of all builds on itself. So if you do, if you accomplish a whole bunch of small wins, that one, boosts your self-esteem, improves your mindset, allows your mindset to be open to the possibility of doing the harder things. And then the harder things are easier to accomplish or become closer to being accomplished because you have made a smaller wins. So it, 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 it all, it's like a bunch of, it's like a giant Lego set and it all builds on each other. <sighs> this last one here, one of these last ones, seeking support, asking for help. <laughs> Again. If you rock it with butterfly chats, you are probably a self-starter, independent, go-getter. You don't need nobody to do nothing for you. I know. I know. I know. Ask for help. Seek support. Build a network of understanding friends, family, and healthcare providers. <laughs> it can be a support group to provide encouragement and guidance during hard times, during good times. Whatever. But also, again, back to the healthcare providers. Build a support system of healthcare providers, whether it be a therapist, physical therapist, um, life coaches, mentors, what have you. Invest in yourself with good, encouraging words, affirmations, good people. Like, do that. Um, also, haha, haha. Practicing mindfulness. Yes, I know. Sorry, guys. Chronic pain. I gotta move. Gotta adjust myself. Practicing mindfulness. So, mindfulness, engaging in this technique, such as deep breathing, meditation, body scanning, to cultivate a present moment awareness and reducing stress related to chronic pain. I actually, I have, I do this and I did not realize I have been doing this for years. I just didn't know what it was. Um, even when it came down to my decision making, uh, when I was trying to do like, you know, a this or that, yeah, a yes or a no. I would always kind of go with a go within and visualize myself in both situations and whichever situation I felt a peace at that's the that's the situation I went for and that is a a a part of practicing mindfulness being present enough inside your body to feel the feels Feel where you are currently. And that is what you can use, whether it be in, you know, if you're in a pain flare, if you're stressed, if you have decisions to make, um, in, in all situations, mindfulness. Um, so we're going to move on into the posture of it and understanding how to actually ha identify physically the pivoting posture and how that posture affects your mental affects you mentally so a physical posture as far as your pivoting is poor physical posture such as slouching hunching over can place additional strain on your muscles joints nerves equilibrium existing pain etc cetera, etc cetera. So when you're in chronic pain, and this is for the caregivers, um, the, the support system, when you are in chronic pain, it wears on you literally. So a lot of times you can, you can see it when, you're, when your warrior spoonie is in an active flare because it is on them. Um, their face or facial expressions change, their, their body language change, um, their mood changes. Because 
I'm sorry. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get a soliloquy out of me if you ask me a question. It could be the simplest of questions. But if you ask me a dumbass question and I'm in a pain flare, you finna get a dumbass response. If you get a response at all. Okay. Um, however, for the warrior, when you're in pain, I know you just want to ball up into a ball and just be like, just crush me. But if you can get um, into your favorite uh, on your, if you have a, um, a zero gravity chair, a bean bag, um, go into your bed and use your, um, like your wedges to kind of elevate your feet, whatever your comfortable spot is to kind of help support your bones, your muscles and your joints to help fix your physical posture, then that will help you emotionally and mentally adjust your mental posture because it all literally ties together. If you can relieve your muscle tension, relieve your joint tension, and then your spinal health, like your spinal health, it your neck and your brain Click it lines in with your spine, and a lot of us have SI joint problems, um, which is the low back again, the spine, it's all tied together, guys. So, if you can find a way to get that somewhat comfortable and aligned, that will help you mentally and emotionally to at least give yourself some physical relief. Because really, you can't do any of this work if you're in constant pain. Just just not going to happen. This is also where we go circle back to mindfulness. You get your body into a physical state of relief, however that is. Because even when you're in your relief posture, a lot of us are still in pain, whether it be seizures, uh, uh, ugh. <laughs> seizures, twitches, um, spasms, whatever it is, those still are very painful. So get into as much relief as you can and then do the deep breathing, the um, four, uh, was it, uh, four box breathing. Um, just do whatever it is you can to bring yourself back to baseline. So once you get into like your uh, diaphragmatic breathing, your progressive muscle relaxation, your gentle stretching, your yoga, your pain journaling, a lot of people now, and I say a lot of people because I was one of those people, <laughs> a lot of people don't like to pain journal because they feel it is triggering. And I can understand that because you don't really want to analyze the pain. Like as you're, when you're journaling, it is a form of therapy. You're digging deep. You're having to think about what's happening so that you can write it onto a page. But if you can make yourself to a point to where you can focus in on that pain, Write it down. Um, I def I always recommend Folia Health. Um, I am a ambassador for Folia Health, and they are an amazing company that does health research. They give back to the chronic pain community. They have an amazing app that makes it incredibly easy um, to either batch record, um, batch journal your pain, or you can also you can do it daily. Um, you can go to foliahealth.com and just, you know, download the app. You can just use Butterfly Chats um, when you sign up. And that will be a code that will, for one, it, it, it I will get a, um, a commission for the signups, but the app itself is free. So there is no charge for you to download the app, but um, downloading the app is a way to help support the podcast. So if you would, please um, go to foliahealth.com, download the app. But um, once you sign up um, on the sign up page, hit um, down where it says invite code, just put butterfly chats. Um, we appreciate it. So using an app where you can track 
And then over time, you will be able to see what trends you have coming to your pain. And when, if, you can find, if you can see a trend, that's when you can catch a flare. If you can catch a flare, you can stop a flare. It's all, it's all in there, man. If you, I hope you guys still with me now. I hope I'm not talking to the void because if y'all still with me, I'm giving y'all gold here, like taking some notes, like download this episode because y'all, this is how you are going to thrive with chronic illness. This is how you're going to get to the place where you can even begin to dream about anything other than chronic pain. You have to, you have to master you have to master your own pain journey. And before you can do that, you got to master this pain. You got to wrangle that sucker. So after you get through with the journaling and get that, get that situated, then it's something called cognitive reconstruction, which basically is a mindset shift. Um, that's when the mind sh- mindset shift begins. Once you can catch a flare, you can see trends, you know when to weave and get off the road before something happens, that's when you can start planning life around your chronic pain. Let me tell you. Now, this is also where seeking support from friends, family, support groups, things of the like, that is also where all of that is going to come into super, super helpful because you're going to need support all throughout this journey. Like there will be never a point where you do not need someone to talk to. Even if it's just to vent about some randomness. You're going to need that. Okay? So start building your community now. Self-care. Ha! Ah, self-care. Self-care, self-care, self-care. should get a tattoo. Self-care. Um... If you don't do it, you need to start. And I'm talking to myself because I am uh, I am better at self-care, but it can always be, be better. Self-care is anything, anything that prioritizes you as the focus. Where it's relaxation, enjoyment of movies, TVs. Uh, overall well-being, such as taking a warm bath, listening to soothing music, or enjoying hobbies that bring you joy. Anything that puts you first is self-care. That's it. So, um, we are also going to not um, ignore that there will be reoccurring and surprising challenges challenges that come up during the all of these processes um the physical limitations because the more you do the more pain will come even like you will get to a point to where oh i got it i finally got a groove and then something else will come and it's gonna throw you off again that's why having that support because you're gonna need it it is gonna you're gonna need it um, emotional distress because what right when they <laughs> what's the saying right when I thought I was out they pull me back in that's chronic illness right when you think you got a handle on this sucker it'd be like oh aha psych your mind no that's why you're gonna need support you're gonna need someone that you can like you know Facebook message hey <laughs> girl dude bruh you know can you believe this foolery? Because it's going to happen. Isolation. Because, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's real. It is so, especially now with all the delivery apps now, like, it is so easy to not leave your house. I am the, I'm the queen of not leaving my house. And now I'm proud of it. Um, I get just about everything delivered, and I, I I get I get visibly upset when I have to leave my house for there near anything. Um, that's why isolation and avoiding that social isolation is so important. Which again goes back 
to having a support system to help you avoid emotional distress because chronic illness will get into your head and it will talk to you, them sweet little nothings that's not so sweet, and it will jack you up. Just put it out there, okay? Don't let chronic illness fool you because... It will take you to places you really never thought you wanted to go, ever. Um, and let's talk about the financial strain, because it, it is not cheap to be chronically ill at all. It is not what's hot. It is expensive to be sick, <laughs> okay? Um, so all of those things are all part of the life of chronic illness. So. I'm going to tell you, I have found so many times when I've had to just do a full stop in my life to accommodate my chronic illness. And that's okay. And I can say it that I understand how difficult it is to make this decision. However, making this decision is the best for your overall health. Doing a full stop is basically exactly what it means. You stop. You are in the bed. You are at home. You are in the bed vegging out. You are eating whatever it is you can eat as long as you are eating and drinking because I have had um, situations and, and, and episode sessions where my body has broke down on me so bad to where I wasn't even able to eat or drink and it was so hard, you know, um, and to come out of that is difficult. Um, but it is possible because I have a support system. And on those days where you're like, they don't want to hear me. I'm not going to bother them because I keep complaining about the same thing. They keep, they don't want to hear me because they have a life. And I'm not going to, all those little things that you hear in your head, that's chronic pain, i.e. the devil, lies from the pits of hell. Ignore them <laughs> and reach out for help. Do not sit in that mess. Okay? Thank you. Uh, so we did already talk about some mindfulness practices and coping mechanisms, which is the deep breathing and the stretching and the whatnots. Consistency. Now, my mentor has always um, told me, and she got, you know, she really drilled into me that consistency and frequency are two different words. They're they're not the same thing. So you can still be consistent showing up once a month. Frequency is like once a month. <laughs> like I mean, it, so just because you know user eight five two 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 shows up every day doesn't mean that you have to. If your bandwidth is only once a month or once every two weeks or once every by quarter, then that's what you do. And if like if you're trying to run a podcast, if you're trying to run a support group, if you lay down the expectation from the beginning that, hey, there may be periods where we have to take a break. There may be periods where whatever your situation is, if you lay that foundation from the beginning, your people will be okay with that. They will understand because they're your people. Okay, just lay it down. Just be be open with them. Be transparent. Be authentic. So, okay, I think y'all got. If y'all made it this far, hey, congratulations. Um, <laughs> and you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk. Um, so remember that navigating chronic illness is a journey that requires patience, self compassion, and the willingness to embrace mindset shifts. Cultivating a posture of resilience and, integra and integrating mindfulness practices into your daily routine, you can empower yourself to live a life filled with hope and possibilities, despite the, tell the challenges you may face. So join us the next time on Butterfly Chats as we continue to explore our empowering strategies for living well with chronic illness. So. If you found today's episode helpful, consider supporting Butterfly Chats by donating to our podcast, tuning, up, tuning in on Spotify, visiting our website for additional resources, shopping our online store, 
or becoming a sponsor through our monthly donations. Together, let's build your community of support and empowering those living with chronic illness. Also, follow, follow us on TikTok at Butterfly Chats Media and be on the lookout for our for my new novel, Iron Butterfly, or <laughs> The Iron Butterfly, coming out in April of 2024 and you can join the book club the hopeful horizons collective on the reamsstories.com and there will be a link um, in the description here and you can also find that information on the website at butterflychats.com so all right guys uh that until next time i will talk to you later